Hi, I'm Rachel and welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. We've got another rainy day garden tour for you today. It is week 11 in our garden tour series and I've got a lot of cool stuff going on to show you guys. Alrighty, so if we start at the carrot and pea jungle now, you can see some of the carrots are starting to go to seed and it's a little more obvious which stalks are starting to shoot up, but it's only a few of them right now. And I think it's only black nebula carrots. I think the ox heart carrots are still doing pretty well. These just look so lush and green. I took some out the other day to check their progress. You can see that on my Instagram, but they are looking good. I'm thinking it's not too much longer before we actually have carrots. Draco, of course, is getting in my way, per usual. <laughs> Alright, buddy. We gotta look at the peas now. Alright, so peas are looking amazing. They're a little tangled with the carrots, but just about ready to start pulling pods. I'm gonna try shelling some of these peas since I haven't been too impressed with the flavor of the pods. But a friend of mine told me that I could try soaking them in a sugar solution before I cook them and that might make them a little sweeter. So I might try that as well. But the peas inside are definitely really sweet and good. So I do want to try shelling them. All right, and if we look over here at the rest of the garden, it is growing so fast now. This is the best looking tomato plant and he's getting real tall. Look at that nice thick stem. He hasn't set any blossoms on this particular plant yet. He keeps dropping them and I wonder if it's because it's been kind of weirdly chilly at night still. Draco. He's just all over this garden tour today. <laughs> so basil looking great. I um, pulled the top off recently so that it would split. We've got some nice peppers purple basil back there. All my peppers are starting to flower, but I haven't seen any fruits set. I think the prettiest flowers are the Buena Mulata, which if you'll bear with me for a second, we can weave our way back there. You can see that purple flower right there. They're gorgeous. I've still got a complete jungle of radish pods here. Again, this is only like about 10 radishes that I let go to seed. And if I back up here, you can see it's just this massive, massive jungle. Been pulling off of these pods. Um, they're actually edible, if you didn't know. Made a video uh, recently about how you can uh, pick them, eat them, and cook them. They're pretty tasty. Uh, so if you want to check that out, I'll link it up above. Right here in between the radishes, if you can see, is my single seed challenge tomato plant. He's still surviving back here. I think he is trying to put on flowers, but has not put on any fruit yet. I think I only have one fruit on my big tomatoes. I think he's back right here. Ah, yes, there it is. This is an Amish paste tomato. Um, and this is the only big tomato fruit I have set. My little dwarf ones are starting to set fruits, but not the big ones except for this one right here. If we scooch past the radishes, we can look at the turnips. I've been pulling from these, I swear. You can see down there, there's still some bulbs forming coming up, um, but they are starting to go to seed as well. Um, so I'm going to leave these because that went so well with the radishes. Um, but I am going to try and pull most of these. I'll only leave like two or three to flower. Um, especially since these poor tomatoes back here are really starting to get crowded out now. We've still got kale here. Promise I've been pulling off of these. They always look about the same. Another Amish paste. This is one of the ones that looked a little sick, if you remember, and it's definitely looking fully recovered now. Although this pepper, I cannot say the same for it. 
Um, I'm just, I keep hoping that it'll start putting on new growth. But right now it looks like it, it might not ever do that. If we come take a look from the back, you can see there's still a couple of onions in here. Um, this one just flopped over and uh, those two back there haven't yet. Um, I don't want to pull this in the middle of all this rain. So I'm going to leave them and see what happens. Oh, here's more of those pretty Buena Mulata flowers. This is the only purple flowers I've ever seen on a pepper so far. They're so pretty. And again, the tomatoes back here, um, they're still looking healthy, but they're much, much smaller than their counterparts in the front of the bed. Now, if you look, you can see that this area where I cleared the kudzu is still clear, but in the background, see all those very large green leaves that are covering everything? That is kudzu, and it is coming back. Uh, you can see even right here, here's a vine coming up. I have to continually pull these so that they don't come back. All right, buddy, let's go. We are approaching the trellises. <laughs> there he goes. That's his thing. All right. So if you take a look here, you can see that some beans are starting to come in. Look at that. Still don't know what kind they are, uh, but it looks like we'll find out very, very soon whether this is the Chinese red noodle bean or the 1500 year old cave bean. They've been climbing pretty well. This one vine in particular is doing really well. I am really hoping that by the end of the summer this entire trellis is covered in vines. You can see a second one here coming in. And there's a jumping spider that lives here. I wish I could show you guys. I think he's hiding because it's been raining. But he's doing a good job protecting my plants. So I say thank you, Mr. Jumping Spider. The other side of the trellis has taken a little bit more time um, there's more of uh, the other variety, whichever is, whichever it is, um, on this side. You can see these ones with the more spots. Um, they're a different variety than this more normal looking bean leaf here. Again, I still don't know which is which, but we will find out very soon. Um, and these kind are taking a lot longer to vine up. Uh, and you can see this one tried, and then something ate all of its little leaves off. Um, so these guys have been getting neem oil treatment, but again, it's been raining literally every day, so it's really hard to keep up with stuff like that. Quick peek over here at the Malabar spinach. It is fluffing out so nicely, and it feels so thick and healthy. I can't wait to see this start shooting up its little vines. So the garlic bed, um, you can see some of it is now flopped over. Uh, the leaves are starting to die off a little bit, and I read in some places, but not others, that you should knock your garlic over two to three weeks before you harvest. So I knocked over some of it, and some of it I left, and it'll be an experiment. We'll see which ones make bigger bulbs. However, I did just yesterday pull off um, scapes from almost all of them, so I feel like that's a good sign. Pulled off little scapes, and now they will make bigger bulbs, hopefully. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm still hopeful about the garlic. Last week I mentioned how I planted hard neck garlic instead of soft neck, soft neck garlic. And uh, in the south here, it doesn't really get cold enough for the hard neck garlic to like, have its freeze time. Uh, and so soft neck garlic is preferred because it takes less time than it needs to be freezing. Um, so I'm not too hopeful about having huge bulbs, but hopefully I will have at least some edible garlic from this bed. It is a lot. There are a lot of bulbs planted, so even if each one of these is just like two or three cloves, I mean, that's still a crap ton of garlic for one person. Just a quick peek in the greenhouse. These two backup peppers are actually growing now, although slowly, probably because of the pots they're in, but I mean... They're definitely growing, and I think if I planted them out, they would probably take off, especially once it gets warmer. Although my bee mall, most of it died. Um, I still haven't planted it out. 
Um, but I thought it was dead and this one is just now starting to look like it'll survive. Not entirely sure what happened to him. Might have been a little too cold one of these nights a couple weeks ago. Oh, you know you're cute. Yeah, work that camera. Yeah, look at you. Look at you go. Oh. It's only 70 degrees out here, uh, but it feels like 80 because of the humidity. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever been to South Carolina, experienced South Carolina humidity, but it basically feels like I'm swimming through the air right now. It's really intense. All right, so let me turn you guys around and let's see the yard. All right, we'll start off like normal looking at these sad, sad potatoes. Um, I actually, I was digging through them the other day to figure out how big the potatoes were and I accidentally picked one. Um, so I had that with dinner. It was like this big, you know, not very big at all, especially for a russet, um, but it did taste like a potato um, and it cooked up and it was completely edible. So I am proud of that. Um, if you look over here, I've got my refugee tomatoes. These guys are looking amazing. You can still see the remnants of when they were sprayed with that uh, weed killer. Uh, their malformed leaves and then their beautiful, beautiful new growth. Um, these are going to be great tomatoes. They're a little behind everybody else, but you can see his brother right back there. They are going to do just fine. And in between them, I have my ginger now putting on leaves coming up. It is going to take a long time before I get ginger from this, but I'm pretty excited. So next to tomatoes and ginger, we have the store-bought basil. We have the one that is recovering. He's another one that I pulled the top off of so that he would have two branches starting out. And this is the one that I thought was going to die because it had some fungal infection you can see down there at the bottom. But I've been spraying it really religiously and it looks like it's definitely recovering. So that's positive. Next to him, I have my stevia. I tried one of these leaves actually the other day and it literally, it tastes like sugar and salad. <laughs> um, I'm sure I'm going to have to learn what to do with these other than just like eating them off the plant. Um, but it's coming right along. It had a pest problem too for a while. Um, but again, I've been trying to keep on top of that neem oil. Um, so especially now that it's warming up, I think all, a lot of these plants are going to be able to start outgrowing their pests. Now, you remember I was saying the dwarf tomatoes are starting to put on tomatoes. Um, you can see, look at that. These are going to be real cute, um, bright orange tomatoes. So I'm very excited about that. Look at how cute they are. Just in this tiny little pot. Cute little tomato. That's as big as they get, so don't worry. It's a micro dwarf variety. Yeah, these are these look so healthy. These look even better than the ones that I put out in the big bed where they have more room for their roots. So that's really interesting. My tomatillos, if we look up here, you can see right there is a tomatillo. Right there is a tomatillo. Um, so far, those are the only two I've got, um, but two is better than zero, right? <laughs> this is my first time growing tomatillos. So we'll see how this goes. Um, I have not yet hand pollinated them, but I might have to at some point. Um, although I'm not sure why I would need to because I have so many bees and pollinators running around. Oh, I just noticed looking next to me. Can y'all see spider friend there on top? Hi spider friend. Thank you for your service. Um, I like to think of spiders as my plant's bodyguards. They, uh, they eat all the other pests that would rather eat my plant. Um, and even though I used to be very, very afraid of spiders, um, I, I would try <laughs> and let them live peacefully in my garden. Here's another little guy. He's been here for quite a while. If I can get the camera to focus on him. He is very pretty. Ooh, oh no, I don't want to disturb your web. But he's got some blue and yellow stripes on him. He's real pretty. Now behind him, he is protecting this beautiful basil plant. Um, this one I'll probably harvest from soon. 
Um, if you guys want to learn how to make pesto, let me know in the comments. I've got a pretty good recipe for that, and I might even do it in my mortar and pestle, which is the traditional way of making pesto. Um, I'm really excited about that. The whole reason I grow basil is to make pesto. Next to him, we've got the New Zealand spinach. Been pulling leaves off of this for my smoothies and my salad grange, which still somehow look great coming up at the end of May now. Um, and then we've got all uh, the things that have gone to seed. We've got my uh, noble giant spinach that's gone to seed, my cilantro that's gone to seed, um, and various herbs back there. Uh, my baby strawberry, I moved him back here because he was getting lost in the clover jungle. That is ripening up. That is going to be beautiful. My dill is getting huge. Look at that. I'm going to have to start pulling from this soon. Maybe I'll try making my own brine to pickle some radish pods. And then the thyme, he's living right back there with the oregano. Oh man, I almost didn't even see the oregano with all of this clover he's living near. All right, so we backed out of there to take a better look at the peppers. These, again, are all the hot peppers that I'm growing in these bags. Uh, and they are actually looking really great. Um, let me show you one in particular. So this guy, he was very, very sad. And the top of him got eaten off. And if you can see, he's got gobs of new growth coming out of the top of him. I am so happy about that. I was not sure he had the energy to recover. Um, similarly, next to him... This guy also looked very sad. Um, all of these leaves uh, were just very scraggly. And now suddenly this week, he is putting on a lot of side growth too. So this rain is good for something at least. The humidity keeps the, the temperature feeling a little higher, which peppers love to be warm. So that's probably why they're looking so good. And I think maybe the bushiest pepper I have is this one. These putting on little flowers. You can't see them, they haven't opened, but I'm thinking we'll have some peppers setting here in the next week or two. So that's really exciting. All right, and in terms of beans, I've moved the beans around a little, so more of them are over here now. Um, and these are starting to flower and put on beans. You can see these beautiful purple flowers on the dragon tongue over here. Um, I wonder if they call it a dragon tongue because the flower actually kind of looks like a dragon tongue. Um, so I've had beans coming on these, I've had beans coming on my uh, bright pink beans, and I have not seen flowers on my black beans yet, but I'm really in no rush with these black beans. I'm going to try and save them and eat them for actual dried beans, and we'll see how much I get from these two. This will help me gauge um, my actual production uh, capacity. So. In the future, if I want to have gobs of dried beans, I know how to multiply that out. And if we take a look over here at the squash, this big guy is my pumpkin. You can follow his little trail all the way almost to the fence there. Um, I'm going to have him go behind the beans um, and out this way eventually, which is similar to where he grew last year. And I've got cucumbers as the rest of this back here. Um, they haven't really started vining out yet, um, but as soon as they do, they're going to get trained up this trellis here. Mostly they're looking great. I still don't have any clue which variety is which because I was horrible about labeling things as I planted them. Last but not least, we'll check up on this strawberry plant. Not looking great. Um, I got a few strawberries off of him. I think only one or two of them actually looked like normal strawberries. The rest of them were kind of mangled and I don't see any more right now. Oh, you can see that one rotted. Uh, yeah, somebody told me that they think it needs more room and I definitely agree. Um, I think whenever I can dedicate more room to strawberries, I will, um, but they do kind of take over. So I've got to be careful where I decide to put them in the future. Okay, so I said strawberries were last, but they're not last. These guys are last. I keep forgetting about them. These are my squash starts. They're going out in the bed where the garlic is when it pulls out. Um, and then this plant here on the end, this is a flower my dad got me for Easter last year. I thought I had killed it. 
and I was going to clean out the pot and lo and behold there was little sprouts so that is taking off nicely and I'm hoping it'll flower again this year that would be really nice alrighty that was garden tour week 11 uh, it seems like we made it all the way through without it raining which is awesome um, I think one of the biggest reasons it's raining is because there's a tropical storm that just came up through Charleston and it's heading north uh, they call it Tropical Storm Bertha, uh, and we are getting some of the the push off rain from that right now. So I'm so thankful that I was able to show you guys the garden on time this week. The rain let up just long enough for me. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I won't keep you too much longer because I don't want to be out in this humidity. Oh my god. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you very soon for another video. And until then, happy gardening.